Hi, I'm Rob Seufer from Hematologic Malignancies at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute in Boston. I'm joined here today by... I'm Xenia Papanicolaou. I am an infectious disease specialist at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York and professor of medicine at Cornell Medical College. We're going to be talking today about cytomegalovirus infections in recipients of hematopoietic cell, stem cell transplants. Uh, and I'm going to be asking Azini a few questions here about the issue of CMV in patients undergoing transplantation. Uh, first, Zinni, I'm sure it's a, it's a big problem for a number of our patients. Can you describe the types of patients who are particularly susceptible to contracting CMV? Right, so approximately 50% of the patients that come for transplant are CMV seropositive. That means that they have had previous infection with CMV. And uh, CMV is the most important and the most common viral infection after transplant. About half of the CMV seropositive patients will develop CMV infection after transplant. This infection requires treatment with antiviral medications, and there is a lot of side effects related to the currently available antivirals. Are there a particular type of transplant patient who's more susceptible uh, to CMV reactivation? Yes, a number of uh, uh, factors influence the, uh, the risk to CMV infection. So usually the degree of mismatch, so recipients that get grafts from mismatched donors uh, cord blood transplants, T cell depleted transplants, and the patients that eventually develop graft versus host disease are at greater risk for CMV infection. Uh, what types of organs does CMV affect? Well, these days, CMV is presented as viremia. So we have very sensitive methods, molecular methods, uh, PCR, to monitor patients from very early after transplant to see if there is CMV replication in the blood. So the most common CMV event that we see is CMV viremia. If the viremia is not treated, then CMV eventually affects uh, many organs. Uh, a common organ is the lungs, and usually CMV pneumonitis is, um, carries very high fatality rates. And the other most common organ is the GI tract, so CMV colitis. How do we monitor patients for CMV? How do we know if they're about to get a CMV infection? At my institution, we start monitoring with a PCR about two weeks after transplant, and we monitor, monitor regularly. Initially, the high-risk patients even twice a week, and the lower-risk patients at least once a week. And we do this monitoring until day 100, more or less. And patients that continue uh, to be at risk for CMV, we continue monitoring until uh, six months after transplant and even until one year after transplant, until we believe that they are no longer at risk for CMV. Uh, 